Hey y'all, Haley here with K9 Pack in Hillsborough, North Carolina. I want to talk to you about how we address leash reactivity in dogs. We do this in three different parts. And the first is by working on their mindset. The second is by teaching them what we want, which is usually the heel command. The third is by correcting what we don't want and the over arousal and reactivity. So it really works best when you work on all three of these at the same time and give them all the information, what you want them to do, what you don't want them to do, and that you make sure they're in a good headspace and they're not constantly anxious and over aroused and worked up. So how we work on a dog's mindset is one, we work on duration, which is usually the place command. And we teach dogs to hold the place command for two to three hours at a time. And this works by working on their impulse control. So when something happens that's exciting and they want to get up and investigate, they can't because they're in command. Um, so that's how we work on their impulse control with duration and the place command. It also helps them practice calmness. So they have to lay down and be calm and there's no point getting worked up because they're just laying there. Uh, another thing that we do is right off the bat, we start addressing thresholds. There's no running in or out of thresholds, whether that's the outside door or the crate. Uh, we address, uh, we correct all of those things. If you're going to run in, there's going to be a correction. Um, and then we teach them to wait for permission. And we teach them to wait for permission for food and to get on the couch and to ask for affection. Like there's no nudging and pushing for affection. And so transitioning them over to a permission-based mindset can really help with their impulse control in general and them not being over aroused and worked up and anticipating and anxious about what's going to happen because they need to be looking to us um, all the time and looking to us for that leadership and guidance is really important to keep them in the right headspace. So Working on their headspace is that first part. The second part is teaching them what we want. So teaching them a really strong heel command. I want you to walk behind me to the left and I want you to auto sit and really engage and look to me for guidance. When I stop, I want you to look up and make eye contact and then I'm going to tell you we're ready to keep moving again. I want them to, you know, be self-regulating. If I slow down, I want them to slow down. I want them checking in and paying attention. Um, the other good thing about teaching them the heel command is we can start to see over arousal and reactivity earlier. So if our dog is a couple paces in front of us and they start getting worked up and aroused, it's going to be harder to see than if they're behind us and they start getting worked up and aroused. We're usually going to see that creep forward from them. And when we see that creep forward from them, we can go, ah, uh -uh, heel, and go ahead and give them a stem and get them right in the back, back where they're supposed to be. Um, so once we've worked on the mindset and we tell them exactly what we want, we start putting them in situations where they might be reactive so that we can correct what we don't want. And the sooner in their escalation scale we can correct them, the more effective it's going to be and the lighter we're going to have to correct them. So, you know, like a lot of dogs have different signs like some dogs will raise the hair on their back some dogs will drop their head or puff their chest out or push their ears forward or really like snap their head and be engaged so i'm gonna throw up a video on the screen here so you can see um piper out on a walk where she's being aroused in her own neighborhood and we're gonna break down like where we would correct and what we would expect to see so piper's already been working on her mindset and she already knows a really strong heel command so let's take a look at that here is Piper walking in her own neighborhood and we've got a nice heel going on. She is behind me and not too far off. We've got a loose leash. Her body is relaxed. And in a minute here, we're going to have a dog run out and bark at her. And you'll see when she starts to get aroused and load up. And that's when we're going to correct. So let's watch her body language. She's still loose and relaxed right here, right there. That where those ears went up and she snapped over. That's where I want to tap and get her back into position. You see how she got right back where she needed to be. And right there, we've got it again. We've got those ears up. That's when we're going to tap and say, nope, we want you to be healing. And right there, we can give another one. So she's still in the learning stages in this video. Um, right there, we can say no again and tap. And hopefully we're keeping that big explosion from happening and keeping her from getting way too worked up and over the top. And we got her back into a good auto sit and she's checked back in now. So Piper still got some work to go from this video. Um, but we really wanted you guys to see like those moments where you see her starting to load up and starting to get aroused so we can get her back to where she needs to be before that giant explosion. And I think it's really important to, to notice those small details and when you can say no quietly before there's a big outburst. So I hope this helps and that's how we go about addressing leash reactivity.